have to work. I think Golden was far enough along the road to need a stop, a coffee, and maybe even a meal or whatever. And so to do that, and then the bike path was open. And if you travel up and down the Kimo Highway to Sydney, you know there are service centres that were ruling. corner and pheasant's nest and so people who need a coffee fix or even something to eat on the way now and stop in those places get what they want go around Goulburn keep going down the federal highway take the Sutton Road turn off to Queen Bean and uh, out to Coomer and so forth so the ski traffic also stopped Yes, all those huge trucks roaring through our scent, our main street. They also stopped coming through the main street, so the bypass was a good thing. I'm not trying to suggest it wasn't, uh, but it meant all the money from those uh, from the ski traffic and even tourist coaches and so on. No longer need. So you can probably see where this is going. But the third big event at the same time was the then New South Wales government, which I think was a Liberal government headed by the Premier Nick Griner, decided that the railways needed an overhaul and there were too many people working on the railways that freight in particular was better off going on the road and there were all these people working on the railways and they come up through a period of strong unionism his government Practices. And in their view, all of these people who worked on the railways would be unable or unwilling to accept the new way of doing things. Now the railways were allowed to run, be run down in the old way. And so at that time, Lots of people who were train drivers who lived in Goulburn, lots of small stuff, and, you know, ticketing and all that stuff that happens on the platform and at the station, which of course we now don't have. Uh, but also in the what was called the Perway workshop. So all the people who did maintenance on the trains that lived and worked in Goulburn, their jobs were gone as well. And what happened was the government kind of made these people redundant, offered them early retirement or bucket loads of money to go away, or just made them just retrench them basically, they were fired. Now, a fellow that talked about having gone to the Gold Coast Maybe he was one of those people because folklore says that lots of people who worked on the railways, in particular, took their redundancy packages and moved to the Gold Coast or to South East Queensland where they wouldn't have to put up with the winters that I talked about, they wouldn't have to buy winter clothing for their children, they have to pay the winter heating bills. And the consequence of all those three major events was that the population of Goldman, which at that stage was about 20,000, 20, something like 16,000, almost overnight. So 
Okay, we're... That's a lot of about 4,000 people. 20% of your population, I think I've got that maths right. Uh, and of course, with those people, and their money. Yes, they lost their job. But you lost your job on the railways. For example, that was one job lost. But then if you left and your partner was also working in Goulburn, that was another job gone. And if you had children and you took your children out of school, which of course you would, that might be just the tipping point where the school was between keeping a teacher and losing a teacher. So that teacher goes and their children leave the school, which has a flow on effect, and their partner leaves their job, which has a flow on effect. Sometimes those jobs will be re replaced by someone, you know, sometimes the job was filled, other times it wasn't. So those three major events saw the population fall quite significantly and it took quite a while before uh, the city recovered from those blows and so now that we've got all those housing estates and people are coming to the town uh, the things that I talked about earlier services for them and jobs uh, would be ideal. Now, I confess that in the uh, last decade and more of my working life, I travelled to uh, Queanbeyan every day. Uh, for those who don't know, that's a round trip of about 180 k's. And I did it because that's where my job was. Uh, and as I said, as a public school teacher, you say the schools in Goldman, well, yes, they were. And I think I'd been at most of them. And I got a position in distance education, which was based in Queenie. So I had to go where the work was. Uh, so there may be some people who travel to Canberra to work who would prefer to work in Goulburn if there were jobs here and maybe some who would prefer to but are simply unable to because their job requires them to be uh, in an office in Canberra. Now, uh, I, the video that I watched that started me talking about this subject, uh, as I said, the, said the third commenter made some points about uh, starting a business in Goulburn. And as I said, I don't know anything about running a business. I've never run one, and I don't know anything about it. So I'm not about to give anyone advice about how to do it. Uh, I would say, sadly, that businesses come and go. Some survive, some are successful, some last several generations of the same family. <coughs> And some don't. And it's true that the current economic climate, to use a cliche, hospitality, that is cafes and restaurants and so on, are doing it tough. And it appears that retail might be doing it a bit tough also. Uh, the 
uh, rising cost of living, the rise of cost of uh, the interest rates rising mean that people have less discretionary spending because they're requiring more money to service their mortgage and put food on the table. And if that's a temporary thing or part of a cycle. <coughs> Warning. Hey doggy. I don't know. I'm not the economist so I can't tell you those things. But people who've lived in Goulburn a long time will know that there are businesses that have opened and been successful and then have closed. And I can think of three really big examples. Um, when I came to Goulburn, there was a local hardware store called Godfrey's, run by a bloke called Lloyd Godfrey, who was the second generation of his family to run the business. And then his son, who I think is called Peter, took the business over and eventually, sadly, it failed. I don't know the reason or all the reasons behind it, but I suspect the rise of hardware chains like Mighty 10 uh, <coughs> and much later Bunnings and maybe just the economic climate, maybe management issues, maybe a whole lot of issues, that business closed. Uh, again, local people will remember that at one stage there's a very fancy department store on the corner of Market Street and Auburn Street called Nolman's. Called Nolman's because a bloke called John Nolman, who uh, was a prominent businessman on the council, and there's uh, a memorial to him in uh, Belmore Park. He started the business, or well, perhaps even he was started by his family. And then came uh, uh, other sort of chain department stores like Grace Brothers, which I'll get to in a moment. And that, coupled with the fire at the Normans building that burned it down, meant that was the end of the business. But it had been in Goulburn for a very long time. Uh, Mr. Norman is also responsible for building the business that was the Fireside Inn. It had been a prominent, it's in Market Street across from Belmore Park, a prominent restaurant and had been in business for a long time. And then uh, Perhaps because of COVID and other issues. I don't know all the details, but the last lot of people who were running it, who were leasing the restaurant, the lease expired and they decided they no longer wanted to do that. And the restaurant closed and the property's been up for sale now. Uh, probably two or three years it's been on the market. And the building, it's a lovely historic building, uh, sits vacant. Uh, I said I'd get to uh, chain department stores across from uh, Belmore Park on the corner of Montague Street and Auburn Street, where Harvey Norman is now. There was a uh, large department store 
and I think when it first opened it was called Charles and then later on <coughs> and for all the time that I lived in Goldman it was called Young's and then Young got taken over by Grace Brothers big department store chain run by the Grace family from Sydney and they and David Jones were the two upmarket department stores in Sydney uh, David Jones perhaps a bit more upmarket in any case Grace Brothers took over Young's and then Grace Brothers went belly up and Young's closed and there's been a before the, the current people there were another discount store there at Harvey Norman we're in the basement the ground floor whatever you want to call it uh, so my point being the businesses come and go they succeed or they fail the Ford dealership that used to be on the corner of Bradley and Auburn Street moved out of town and now made me sells Kia guys and motors who were where the target is now they moved out of town obviously there's no holders to sell anymore they sell Hyundai and <coughs> other things so I don't know what the formula for success of a business is but uh, and I'm not sure what the role of the council might be in all that but the young fellow who I don't know if it's a man or a woman the young person who made the comments in Goblin was a hole and there was nothing to do I, I'm not a teenager I don't have any teenage children none of my children who were all educated here in Goldman live here uh, so I don't really know what it is that young people want these days I'm not sure that they know sometimes not to be critical of them it's just that they're often well sometimes they're not sure of what they want until they see something in another place and say wouldn't it be good if we had one of those and of course the taste of young people are fickle and what's cool these days isn't necessarily cool 